guys work the belt line, okay? Mamba, I gave you instructions in the dressing room. The belt will be over the way, Tyler's on the line. All I expect is a good, clean fight. Obey my commands and protect yourselves at all times. You understood? Good luck, Demetrius. Bobo Senya, McKay. Top of the road. Three fights back. What's with the jab so far? Again, a traditional fight coming straight up, conventional. Andre trying angles and winging shots. Andre already comes out to it. Andre came out just bomb rushing Zuleski. As much as he was like hitting Zuleski and pushing him back and just forcing his will on him really, it looked like he was vulnerable at the same time, you know, to get hit. And Zuleski actually did, I believe, connect on a couple of left hooks, even a right hand, which kind of got drowned out just by Andre's sheer aggression, you know what I mean? Android, he started out very aggressively, seemingly trying to knock out Zuleski. Zuleski seemed like a tailor-made type of dude for Andre. The predictable, out of range, head movement. Sergio Mura made note of Andre hitting Zuleski on the top of the head with the first overhand left and dropping him with the second, kind of grazing him. It reminded me a little bit of Thomas Hearns dropping Sugar Ray Leonard in their second fight. Hearns hit Leonard with something and dropped him with a follow-up, like with a grazing shot, but as Leonard afterwards said, he was already hurt from the first punch. Delayed reaction helped along with the follow-up punch. I'm not gonna go round for round, but things that you know I made a mental note of was great coming out that aggressive. If that's necessarily just him trying to prove a point, you know, make a statement. And maybe he's gambling on a quick knockout, maybe disguising something that's not necessarily perfect. Maybe he has an ailment, you know what I mean? I didn't necessarily know yet what it was, but you know, going on like through the rounds, like Suleski never really got into the fight. Was he throwing punches and there was a trying, you know? Um, he can't be faulted for just trying to survive. But at the same time, he wasn't taking the necessary chances to be competitive in the fight, you know? He was getting dominated. At the same time, like, I hear the announcers talking about Andre and his inability to finish fights after hurting his opponent in the early round. And I wonder if that's just about like him being offensive or defensive or 
boxing being aggressive, you know what I mean? I don't know, he might just, in his aggressiveness, still lack something that allows him to finish the fight, you know what I mean? Even when he's boxing, he might not box as comfortably to set his opponent up for a fight finishing punch. And maybe it's just lack of punching power. I think there is something to that actually. He's like to be punching kind of with the inside, with the palm side, but more with the wrist kind of. A lot of loopy stuff that he throws out there. Like people talk about his slickness, but at the same time, is it slickness or is it awkwardness? When it comes to footwork and the way he uses the ring. As his opponent, like at a disadvantage right from the get go. His stance in general gives him a awkwardness advantage over his opponent. His opponent seemingly always a half a step or a step behind, having to adjust to him more so than Andre to them, you know. He's dictating in that regard. But one similarity I think between the second George Foreman and Wright is the relaxation level in the ring. Yes, he, he was a real hyper type fighter the first time around, second time very relaxed. But the one thing that was consistent, he always could punch. He was always a very strong, determined fighter. Mickey Wright's relaxation is allowing him to get off and land solid shots against Sam Solomon in this round. Suddenly, Wright looks a little like a puncher as he knocks Solomon back with every shot. Yeah, Rick, Ricky is doing something you don't normally see him do, which is sometimes to punch with his opponent. Normally he lets his opponent punch and then he goes. Solomon held Winky with the left hand, got an uppercut with the right. An old Lennox Lewis move. Right with a body shot and a left hand inside. And Draco fighting differently. Again, he is uh, in a squat position. Legs are bent. He's able to get more power. I think he also employs awkward, loopy shots, hooks, you know what I mean? If you look at his hands, the way they are placed, they are most of the time like rather low, kind of chest high. He did have what Celeste didn't have, which is a creative, off the cuff type of quality. Like Sergio Muro was constantly saying, he's an artist. He does a lot of things well. I don't know if he's a, any particular thing really exceptional, you know. I'm trying to make comparisons to like all-time greats. Thinking of Southpaws also, looking at that flicking jab of Southpaws that is used very often as far as I've observed it. I wonder why that is. Marvin Hagler was an exception. I wonder why that is. Maybe because he was a converted right-hander, actually. You know, turned into a southpaw. Working with a stiff jab, Marvin Hagler. Actually put um, Thomas Hans out with a right hook, shifting into that right hook, you know, from a southpaw stance. Andre, he was trying to use his jab in this fight, but at times, like, when throwing his jab, putting his feet together, even when cutting the ring off, looking a tad unrefined. Sloppy, I might say, you know, falling kind of over his front foot, having a little bit of balance trouble, but still controlling the fight. Times he was looking for those power punches, maybe he'd get a little repetitive. He'd kind of start bouncing on his toes, you know, get into a little bit of an early thing, you know, start shuffling, trying to get into a rhythm. Maybe out of his boxing, trying to find something fight-altering. It became a pattern, you know, that he went from boxing to aggression, from aggression to boxing, when the aggression wouldn't work necessarily. Like, actually, he started for a couple of rounds to box. And when they say boxing circles around a guy, he was doing that too, so that's Sometimes he's just having fun in there, but at the same time I feel like, is he experimenting? There's so much experimenting in his style that he's lacking in identity. Orthodox to Southpaw at times even, although I think he's a Southpaw essentially. Himself being a natural right-hander, you see that probably when he looks a little bit for that power, although he dropped Tuleski with the left hand, overhand, probably the right hook that's the most um, sharp punch in his arsenal. You can pretty much see that when he throws that left hand, it's a little bit, uh, there's a loop on it. 
And there's a loop on a lot of the punches that he throws, man. Also, he reminds me a little bit of James DeGale in that way, when he's so-called boxing, you know? Very good athleticism, very good hand speed. Pretty good foot speed, you know. He's not a small guy, although he fights rather small, out of crouch almost. And all that weight on that back foot. Like throughout the fight, it became more and more apparent man, that the guy who began with him going from being aggressive, looking for power punches, going back to boxing. The way he went to boxing, you know. It reminded me of Muhammad Ali, the late stages of his career, switching from being flat footed to a boxing style. One or two rounds, three rounds, maximum in a fight, basically. Like all the crowd going crazy for the movement, you know. Ali dancing out there in the later stages of his career, not necessarily being overly effective offensively, barring the jab. Maybe Ali actually used it as a motivational tool for himself to get the crowd cheering, intimidation the opponent, thinking, oh my god, the tactics have changed and momentum has maybe changed when it actually hadn't.
That's going to be difficult. But he's trying. Andre going from the aggressive style to boxing, to bouncing on his toes, trying to get into a groove, trying to shuffle himself into a rhythm, you know, fainting himself into a rhythm. It seemed like he's trying to get loose, like he had an issue. All that weight on that back foot, obviously, that's a style in a way, you know what I mean? He wants to lure you, bait you, and then explode, obviously, from that. Then the comparisons come to my mind. Who they compare him to? I talked about James De Gale. But really, in his best moments, he looked like Roy Jones Jr. out there. We posed the question at the beginning of the fight that Paul had a questionable chin and questionable stamina. Suddenly, that chin seems to be holding up fairly well, and the stamina is not bad. I still think Jones going to knock him out. It's just, I think he's trying to knock him out to the body. He knows he can knock him out to the head. Well, he's a tall, lanky fighter, and... They seem to be more susceptible to body shots. Round eight. He wouldn't be this effective against Lennox Lewis because Lennox Lewis at least be throwing a jab out there. Ring Magazine recently polled a lot of boxing experts on how Roy Jones would do against a number of different heavyweights. And I believe every one of them put Jones down. Right hand. Two types of heavyweights today. There's a small heavyweight like a Chris Bird. Paul looks a little wobbly. There's the giant. Jones trying to go for the finish. Richard Hall's taking some shots to the head. He's been rocked. This saw his promoter, Murad Muhammad, stand up and point, put him down. I heard that. But this is his first time in Indianapolis. Oh, and the people love him here. And apparently he wants to dance around for a few rounds and pick his shots. Oh, he's just being off. Now he's doing the body. Now he's going to the head, showing him angles. This is the classic Roy Jones. You don't know what way he's going. <laughs> the referee doesn't know which way to move. <laughs> Roy's just opening up angles. <laughs> he's embarrassing the WBA's number one contender. What can I tell you? Is this the round? Oh. Is, is this, this the round? round? They rocked him with that right. Trying to think if Wayne Kelly was the referee when he knocked out Brian Brandon in New York and looked at the ref. I can't remember. But if you, if you tell him to go on, he will. Uh, he's over in the corner again. He's going to take a break. Closing seconds. Ooh, there's a flurry. Again. So that's the only landing an average of five punches per round. Andre is fighting a beautiful defensive fight and overhand right. Brian, to your earlier point, did not have the orthodox stance. Still fighting that way. Andre landed two overhand rights right there. Check for the third one. Now in the block. But he's having fun in there. Look at him. Right, a little bolo shot. He's already established and he can move his head and get out of the way of Selecki's shots. So if Selensky tries something more, gets out of his comfort zone, he could get counted with something hard. Andre is trying to memorize Selensky with the head movement, the, the, the arm waving, the movement, just to land overhand shots. And it infuriate him a little bit too, Sergio, isn't he? Embarrass him. Yeah. Not on my level. Please, you're in. Looking out, jab now. Southpaw stance. And then a hard left hand again from Andre. Chris Maddox, you were talking about this earlier, but Canelo floating other options out there. Just like 
Andre to come. He had the same problem that Eddie Rondi Lara had trying to uh, get the Canelo fight. Like, the Emerald Ribbon guy was just too good at that left-handed thing. Going hard body shot by Andre. Aiming for the shoulder for on Andre's uh, uh, elbow or shoulder. When you're this talented, you can even be artistic. Look at that. It was somewhat of a polo uppercut and got out of the way, just embarrassing his opponent. Belt, 27-0. And middleweight titleist. And Chris, you gave that last round to select. Look, I thought Andre took it off a little bit too much in that round. Very aggressive in the early rounds. When he gets up in the cards, he has sense of cruising. Now, that's not a knock, but you're winning, you're winning. But this is sort of what we've seen with Andre in the past. I wonder if he will go back into that mode where he's standing in close and trading, or will he box? Look, it's, he is well within his rights to box at this point. He's got his knockdown. He's won most of the out all of these rounds. He can box the night away now and walk away with his win. Or does he want to close the show and put a hurting on Celeste? I mean, we had that in the, our promotional shoot. Sergio Martinez's legs were gone. He retired immediately, almost, you know? But he had a couple of fights, but we weren't talking about the same guy anymore, you know what I mean? A lot of what made these fighters 
was taken with their legs. And I wonder if Andre, in his goofy moments, obviously we're looking at the prime fighter right now, you know, what could it be, you know what I mean? Is it conditioning? It doesn't seem like it. I mean, the guy's moving a lot. He's throwing punches. He's switching styles. He's switching from aggression to more of a cerebral style, you know? I don't think it was physical fitness. But then back to that knee, you know, thought that early, why is he falling over his front foot? Why isn't he able to? He tried actually, he wasn't using his flicking jab as much in this fight. He was actually trying to throw some double jabs and I guess trying to put some effect on that, you know what I mean? Or not flick with them, not use it as a range finder. But he'd fall over his front foot and uh, put his feet together, come square and shit, you know what I mean? I was wondering about his balance a little bit. If you want to pinpoint it, I think it was Andre's knee maybe. Maybe he had to work through an injury and that would make it even more impressive the way he performed actually. You know, because he was able to showcase so many different methods. Maybe in the more moderate moments he looked like still flashy as fuck, you know what I mean? Looking like Sergio Martinez out there. He got that southpaw thing going on there also. Now I don't know who's uh, footwork wise from the three, Andre, Roy Jones and uh, Sergio Martinez who would be the fundamentally most sound of the three. I can't tell you, I'm a fan, observing. But um, I won. Естественно, Баркер пока тоже не добился каких-то э, успехов, но с другой стороны и противник похвастать тем же не может. Баркеру нужно попасть, попасть хотя бы пару раз. Жестко. Смотрите, шестой раунд идет.
предпоследний раунд. Британец, конечно, бой проигрывает. Что это получилось там, мне непонятно. So Lesky, I guess there could have been like a couple of rounds that he might have been a little bit more competitive in. Is he getting tired, Andre? Is he making it up on the fly? That's what I was thinking for a lot of the stuff. Like I think of him as a slickster, but then again, he likes to mix it up a little bit. The way he goes to the body, just settling into a style that, while well-rounded, isn't erratic. And at times I feel like Andre can be erratic. He's so talented, obviously. He's not necessarily smooth or perfect at any one thing. Varying within a round, like from style to style, winning the rounds. At the same time, it does seem like he's uh, on the brink of getting reckless or maybe lethargic, almost bored, you know? I feel like that's actually the way you gotta beat him, you know? Punch with him. He'll take chances when he punches, when he's offensive. Not necessarily when he's aggressive, but when he punches. You know what I mean? And he's a burst puncher, like a Roy Jones Jr. More so than a punch-picking, pinpoint accuracy type of guy, I feel like. When I see him flurry, that's where I see like the technique maybe going out of the window even a little bit, you know? There's no commitment to one particular style, so I feel like the technique at times is lacking. It might just be concentration. But then again, I also think he got an injured knee. You know, I don't think that necessarily happened within the fight. I think that bum rush early, as aggressive he was in that bum rush, and even that one round where he's just that crouch leaning on his back foot looking for these haymakers, it's almost like he's run out of ideas at that point. While he's winning the rounds impressively, it's more so about his opponent not, maybe not necessarily believing. I said that the guy was trying until the end, you know, he wasn't giving up on himself, but at the same time he wasn't... I don't know if he necessarily also believed that he could pull it off, you know. I think he was fighting his own fight, this guy, you know what I mean? Is this worth even fighting on almost, you know what I mean? Why not giving up? He had that shell shocked look on him. Look, he doesn't touch you, you touch 
I actually just watched it until the 11th round man, because I saw Andre just like pretty much falling over his feet into the ropes after throwing a barrage of punches, completely losing his, uh, his balance. And I kept thinking about that, that leg, is it injured? Especially like when the round ends, you can tell if an injury maybe has occurred, you know what I mean? These fighters do have very good poker faces. But I do believe that when he got back to his corner, his dad did say work the leg. I do believe that I heard that. Andre looked good, you know. If he had an injury, he looked good. If he didn't have one, he looked good regardless. Even if he maybe, that's the thing, man. That's maybe the only thing you can kind of hold against him. If the guy goes the distance. When it did look like the guy was tailor made for him, and that's what the announcers were talking about in the first round. When it pretty much looked like Andre was gonna stop the guy, you know. But while that barrage was going on, I gotta say, man, I was looking for those left hooks, man, that were either barely missing or actually connecting on Android when he was looking for that knockout, you know? Even got caught with the right hand, like I already said. Alright, I don't want to repeat myself over and over. Thanks for listening. Peace out.